Hey everyone, welcome to today's live stream. I am going to talk about the correct usage of safeguard for goats. And before I get started um, with the, the dosages and how you're supposed to use it and everything, I want to say that um, there is a ton of misinformation out there online about how much safeguard you are supposed to use. Well, all the wormers. I'm, I'm going to do, there are 60 wormers that have been researched um, extensively in goats. So we know how much they need because um, almost nothing is, is accurately labeled for goats. So this is why there is a ton of misinformation out there because every, not everybody, a lot of people know that the dosage on the bottle is not correct for goats. And so the question is, where do you find credible information about what you should use? And unfortunately, most people don't know where that credible information is. And so they wind up um, getting information just from anybody um, on Facebook. And that is actually a terrible idea. And there is nothing that has worse information on Facebook and other social media than safeguard it. I've just, I have been blown away by the incorrect dosages that people have asked me about. So, um, a lot of, you know, 20 years ago, everybody thought goats and sheep are the same. So whatever you give a sheep, you give a goat. We now know that for almost every single dewormer that you would give a sheep, a goat would need twice that dosage. So um, if a, if most dewormers are labeled for sheep, you give twice that dosage. Or if they're labeled for cattle, you would give twice that cattle dosage. Um, today we are specifically going to talk about safeguard. Um, and then tomorrow I'm going to talk about Valbazin, which is the other white dewormer. And in the, in, in the end, after talking about all six different dewormers over the next six days, I'm going to talk about combination deworming. And that's where it's important to know what we're talking about with the white dewormers. So Safeguard and Valbazin are both white dewormers. They have the same mode of action. And so if you do a combination deworming, you would pick either Safeguard or Valbazin to do that. But I will talk about that more when I'm talking about uh, combination deworming specifically. So let's talk about um, the um, correct dosages and stuff for safeguard. So I just, I've got to say, I am not making this stuff up. Um, this is from the um, American Consortium for Small Ruminant Parasite Control. That is the group that has um, done all of the research on this. They have tested the different dewormers in goats to see what dosages goats need to actually be effective. Now they've came out with the first dewormer chart in like 2008 or nine. And unfortunately it's still out there. So people still find it. <coughs> <coughs> people are still finding that chart and passing it around and it is no longer correct. This is the third revision of this chart, and this chart was published in 2021. Um, and you know it's the most current one because it actually has the um, logo here for the American Consortium for Small Ruminant Parasite Control, and their website is wormx.info. Um, and you have to be careful even on that website because there's a lot of, of studies on there that are like 10, 15 years old. So always look for the date when something was published so that you know you're dealing with the most current information because that website has been around for a long time. Um, so you've got on here the correct dosages for each of the dewormers. And in the second column, they have safeguard. And the generic name for that is finbendazole. And um, vets will have finbendazole as panicure. Um, so, but what you buy at the farm store is Safeguard. And this one is probably more confusing because it actually has, um, you can buy a bottle of Safeguard that is labeled for goats. And as crazy as it sounds, that is not the correct dosage on there. They put the cattle dosage on there. 
Um, I had multiple researchers tell me that what happened was that the company that makes Safeguard submitted back in the 90s, they submitted the research um, for dosages on cattle and goats and got the label approved. And then when independent researchers started studying this in the, in the early 2000s, they discovered that goats actually need twice as much as cows do. Unfortunately, it would cost a company that has a drug approved by the FDA cannot just go change the label. They would have to go through the whole approval process again, which is why um, the label on Safeguard is wrong um, because the company is not, it would cost, goats are a minor species. And this is why there are not more drugs that are actually labeled for goats because it's just not profitable for drug companies to um, do the research and go through the FDA approval process, which costs millions of dollars. Um, there is a dewormer that was approved in um, Australia, New Zealand back in 2013. And when I wrote the first edition of this book, Raising Goats Naturally, I was so naive. Um, I was writing that book, it came out in 2013. And I talked about this drug that had already, this, this new dewormer has been approved in New Zealand and Australia. And you know, maybe by the time you're reading this, we'll have it in the United States guess what? It's 10 years later and we still don't have that drug on the market in the United States, even though it was submitted for approval 10 years ago. So um, most people I've asked about it say they don't they don't expect it to ever get approved here, which is unfortunate. However, you may have heard me say before, the answer is not in drugs. Um, unfortunately, in Australia and New Zealand, um, they got that brand new drug is an entirely different class of dewormer. And within two years, um, they were still they were dealing with dewormer resistance to that drug. So if you don't use dewormers correctly, you're going to wind up with dewormer resistance um, within a year or two. And that's exactly what happened with that new drug. And it was it is expensive. It was like several hundred dollars a bottle. So it's just crazy to me um, because you find you find on Australian websites that there are still a lot of people recommending scheduled routine dewormings. So it is mind blowing to me that people bought this incredibly expensive dewormer and we're, we're giving it to all of their animals. And unfortunately they wound up resistant to it. So it didn't really help them. So back to the safeguard. Um, so the dosage on the bottle, what is five mig per keg? Um, <coughs> and so when we say that, because some people get confused by this, they're like, oh, I'm supposed to give my goats twice the dosage on this chart. And it's like, no, no, you give them twice the dosage that's on the bottle. And if you look at the dosage on the bottle, the dosage on the bottle is five mig per kg. And so the dosage here is 10 mig per kg. And what that means, um, what that, the way that translates into how you would dose your goat is that a 25 pound, for every 25 pounds, the goat gets 1.1 mil. And, and here's the crazy thing. I'm just going to give you some examples of things that people have asked me or showed me or whatever online. Um, the most recent was just complete insanity. I saw somebody um, on Facebook tell a person that the correct dosage for a safeguard was, was 25 mil per 100 pounds. And here's the correct dosage. <laughs> of safeguard for a hundred pounds and it is 4.6 mil mil is the same as cc so if you're pulling it up into a syringe it would be 4.6 cc and this woman was telling someone that it was actually five times that amount um which is not correct <laughs> so um Unfortunately, you know, for so long we had people underdosing with Safeguard and people saying, oh, it doesn't work. And the reality is that they weren't giving them enough. They were giving them half as much as they needed, which is why it didn't work. So the word got out that it needs to be more. Unfortunately, there there are just people I don't know where they're getting these numbers. Somebody asked me, like somebody said that they heard you were supposed to give eight times the dosage on the bottle we're getting into scary territory here like you can kill a goat with too much um i know someone who accidentally killed their goat a few months ago 
it was a 50 pound goat and they gave it 35 mil, which is about 15 times the dosage. Now, if you go looking online, you might find something that says, oh, Safeguard is like the safest dewormer out there. You can give a hundred times the label dosage. Um, and that is clearly not true because I, I know somebody now um, who gave their goat 15 times the label dosage and the goat died. And it was very obvious that it died of poisoning because it was just like within an hour or two, that goat was flat on the ground drooling and foaming at the mouth. Like it was classic poisoning um, response. So, you know, it, it wasn't that the dewormer was killing all the worms or anything like that, which is another terrible myth that is running around out there. It was because the goat had gotten just way too much dewormer. Um, the reality it with um, toxicity studies also that people need to be aware of they do toxicity studies on completely healthy animals. So if you've got an animal that's already debilitated by worms and you give them a massive overdose of a drug, um, an overdose of the drug is going to kill them because it's toxic. Um, and their body's already in bad shape because it's dealing with this worm overload. So just because you could give a healthy goat a certain amount of dewormer and they survive does not mean that you can give that same amount to a debilitated goat and expect them to survive. So it's really important that you use this chart. Um, you know, you, or you can, if you're using safeguard, you can just use twice the dosage that is on the bottle um, of the goat safeguard. And, um, then, or you can use this chart, you know, if you, if you don't want to do math and you just want to weigh your goat, then you can go, Oh, my goat is 50 pounds. So I need to give 2.3 mil, which in a syringe is going to say 2.3 CCs. And, um, it goes all the way down to 250 pounds. So if you've got a 250 pound goat, you know, you've got a big, big boar buck, um, that would be 11 cc's is what you would give a 250 pound goat. So all that information is right here. The other thing I want to point out is that this form also has information on meat and milk withdrawals. Again, there's a ton of misinformation out there about meat and milk withdrawals. One of the things you have to really pay attention to is how you are giving the drug. All dewormers for goats should be given orally. Information on giving them inject, giving injectable dewormers is very old. It's probably getting close to 10 years now that they said um, that you should never inject dewormers into goats. I'll talk about that more when we are actually are talking about injectable dewormers. Um, but the reality, one of the reasons why is because if you inject it, the milk and meat withdrawal is much, much, much longer than if you give it orally. Um, so like, like the Cydectin, um, sheep drench, if you give it orally, the milk withdrawal is 19 days where if, if you inject it, if you inject Cydectin, which is Moxidectin, the milk withdrawal on that is over two months. It is huge. Like who would ever want to dump milk a goat and dump milk for two months? Not me. <laughs> so, um, you really, really should not use injectables. Um, so there's like all this really great information on milk and meat withdrawal and as well as this other information that you need to read about um, using dewormers in goats. Um, and for more information on using dewormers correctly, I would encourage you to check out our um, podcast on this. When, when the new chart came out, I interviewed Dr. Michael Posado, who was the um, person who did the latest revision. He did the research for the latest revision. And so that is here. <clears throat> you can listen to it here um, or you can listen to it on any of the podcast players. Our podcast for the love of goats is on all of the different podcast players. And um, this is episode number 68 on um, new goat dewormer guidelines. We've also got some other um, parasite related 
episodes. Um, Goat Worms, Myths and Misunderstandings is the most recent. That was episode number 114. Also, Dr. Posado. There's a lot of great information on there that we did that podcast specifically um, because of all of the misinformation that um, was being circulated on social media. And then there's a couple other things here too. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Tomorrow I am going to be talking about Valbazin, um, followed by the, the next two days after that, the clear dewormers, and then after that, um, Levamisole and Morantel tartrate. So I hope you have found this helpful. I also want to tell you all about um, we've got coming up the, the day after Labor Day is when Goat Week is going to start at the Goat Academy. So um, the Goat Academy is our new online school where we've transitioned all of our online goat courses and we're going to be celebrating with a whole week of uh, live webinars. So um, we'll have information coming up on that soon. Um, talk to you later. If you've got questions, post them in the comment section below. Bye for now.